He must be hiding around here somewhere. Anybody home? Show yourself, Hell Monkey. I think he's scared of you. He should be, Jay. He should be. Nice rock. Shove it into my face, G. Trust me, it doesn't mean we're engaged or anything. Might be a tight fit, but okay. So what exactly did that do? Blue gems let me transform into new tools of war, new gears of me. In other words, a new weapon. Magnifico. You know, I bet all the VIPs are walking around with blue gem. You know I found Paula in a dumpster, right? What? You said you met her at the supermarket! I did. It was the bin out behind the dime a dozen. And you just picked her up out of the rubbish and brought her home? Why no? Sometimes I think I hardly know you. What is that? I don't know, but we've got company, as in lots of. Well, if they pull up a chair, I would be happy to beat them with it.
The man who never had his fill. It was a cold and snowy eve. Certainly no night for a man without a home to be walking these grey and endless streets. Inside the pizza parlour, George Reed spun a lively tune on his harmonica. The local children giggled and pointed excitedly at the harmonica man as their parents glowed with approval. His reward would be all the pizza he could eat, six pies at least, and a warm bed in one of these folks' homes. He knew they were good for it. But when he tucked in for the night, George had not had his fill. As the years and calories stacked up, most men would have got older and fatter. Yet for all he consumed, George only got thinner as he washed from town to town. Tapeworm! Tonight, he plied his trade with some grannies and orderlies in a nursing home. hoo ha His harmonica filled the room with joy. After devouring three helpings of pork chops and mashed potatoes, he eyed the plate of the old woman next to him. Juice dribbled down his chin. Go ahead, Georgie, she said. You're such a good boy, you shouldn't have to starve. But George had not had his fill. Early the next morning, he was already on the freeway with his thumb in the air. Where are you headed? said the man in the truck. Nowhere, said George. Anywhere. It was a new decade, and tonight George played to an all but empty bar in the city. He had lost a lot of weight. Afterwards, the only woman in the joint took the stool next to him and asked him his name. The bartender leaned over the counter. You don't know this guy, Mary. George is famous, being all over the tri-state area. With a wink, he added, man's insatiable. And that night, George proved it as he buried his face in Mary's beaver. Holy woodland creatures! Had a boy, George! Had a boy, George! Play that harmonica, she purred. But even after five trips to heaven and back, he had not had his fill. The morning after was an awkward affair as they stared at each other over coffee. One wanted to feel more, the other just wanted to feel. In his final days, George was all skin and bones. I can relate, except for the skin part. His last meal had been a mistake. It was on a sidewalk one night in a small suburban town that he came across the boy. Hungrily, and with an agonized grimace, he opened his mouth to beg for help. Out came a cacophony of wheezes and toots. 